Hello everyone, welcome back. It's Space Engineers episode 59. I'm an Igneous and today it's another update on our huge project, the Atlas Interplanetary Interstellar Mining Control Headquarters Vehicle. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. Uh, I just took a long weekend off for making videos and it was fantastic. You're probably wondering, dude, if you took a long weekend off from making videos, why is this one so short? I've already seen how long it is, and it makes me mad. It's because I'm trying to keep the superfluous details to a minimum. I'm not trying to pad the videos to make them longer. I'm just kind of showing what we've got. But having had a long weekend to just kind of play the game casually, I've made a lot of progress, a lot of fine-tuning progress, making things work that weren't quite there before. And we're going to show that to you today. And I think by the time we're done, you might be a little bit excited about how far we've made it. So... We've got our track ship, which is this guy here. This is the mock-up of the track ship that we've been using to test. The drill ship, which is this guy here, that rides back and forth along the track under its own power, provided everything is tuned and set up properly. It should be able to do that almost indefinitely. So there were a couple of things that I needed to address, um, which is, first of all, making sure that the sensors that are detecting when it's time to change direction were working properly. I'm just, first of all, yeah, I've got plenty of hydrogen. We're going to fly over here. We're going to take a look, just to kind of give you an idea exactly what was going on. Previously, we were, we had the sensors uh, facing up into this sort of ridge here. And then they'd get to the end and they'd get to this block here and it would be closer and they would be set up to understand that, hey, there's an extra block there. Only I think we had it uh, back farther here. It wasn't directly above the connector. It was somewhere in here. The difficulty with that is that the way that the sensors are tuned is you're always detecting one meter in every direction around the sensor. And what that means when you've got a 2.5 meter wide trough that it's riding through, if it's even just a little bit off, the sensor is going to trigger and it could tr trigger in the middle of the track and then the whole thing starts behaving like it doesn't know what the hell to do. It's not the best kind of scenario. So what we did to solve that is we moved the sensors up here onto this structure that's holding all of the carry wheels. The carry wheels are the ones that ride along the surface of the track to kind of basically suspend the vehicle as it's going backwards and forwards. And it's also got the bumper wheels on the front and back to absorb a little bit of the impact into the structure here when it gets to the end. Now, because we moved the sensors out in this direction here, far away from the track and everything that was going on, we had to create a little arm here that the sensor will recognize as it gets close. It's a more reliable way of detecting when you've reached the end of the track and indicating to the, the um, drill vehicle that it's time to turn around and start heading the other way. After a brief pause to connect this connector with that connector, lock them down, and then transfer the stuff out of the cargo container that's holding all of our ores and things. And I have to double check to make sure that we actually put uh, conveyor sorters in there. We may not need them, but something tells me we will. And it'll be a simple fix if we do, to just put a couple of conveyor sorters that grab whatever we need to grab and uh, send them out when we're connected. So that's that was one big thing, was getting that set up and working, and it's a very um, straightforward, simple solution. It doesn't look horrible. Made a nice little arm, got kind of some angles in there. Now one of the things that I installed, and you can see it as it's getting a little bit closer with the two connectors, it's right above the connector on the drill ship. You can see the little um, electrodes. They start to glow red when it's turned on as I put welders on the end of the ship so that as it goes through the track it's welding as it goes and repairing any damage that was done as a result of whatever with the, with the way this game works and the physics and there's things that are maybe a little bit randomized and stuff just happens for no apparent reason it's never a bad idea to have something that automatically repairs the road that it drives on so to speak so that's what this thing is set to do and this was a problem that i had uh, that was in the back of my mind in the sense of how are we going to resolve this every time we we change something every time we tweak something uh something bounces something jumps something does something strange and we need to be able to control that uh, and if we can't always control it then we need to be able to repair any damage that's being done so we're set up now to repair damage So we've got it going front and back, and then back to front the way we want it to. We've got it welding 
the track so that it's staying repaired, hopefully requiring a minimum of maintenance from ourselves directly as things are kind of progressing through the mining process. The other thing that I wanted to do, and this is something that I tried with the sensors originally, hoping to keep the ship a little bit more uh, straight through that, that trough, was to put some wheels, and you can see them now, they're kind of touching the sides of the track, there's two on each side, and every time the thrusters cycle, the wheels also kind of push closer together and then go back to their normal position to try and keep it straight. And so far it's been working pretty well. It's amazing how much easier the whole ship moves through the track when it's perfectly lined up and it's not rubbing um, blast door blocks against the sides of the trough that it's supposed to be keeping it straight. So that's been de a definite improvement and one of the reasons why we had to scale back the throttle so much as well on the thrusters is because when we got everything perfectly straight and lined up and nothing was creating friction to hold it back uh, we had a few mishaps involving uh, damage and explosions and things of that nature so now it's not fast and I'm okay with that because we can tune that very very easily once things are done and taken care of now I have this sneaking suspicion that it's time to turn this guy off which we can do with our newly added timer block that just turns everything off. All of everything, the thrusters, the sensors, the timer blocks, it just turns everything off so you can leave the ship. You don't have to worry about it misbehaving while you're gone. And we're going to show you uh, proof positive that we are making uh, decent progress. Now we're jumping right to it rather than try and build suspense and, and lead up to it because this is kind of where we're putting the money where our mouth is that this thing is actually moving forward and making good progress this is the the track ship or i should say 95 percent of the track ship uh but it's enough to give you a pretty damn good idea of how it's going to look when it's finally suspended from the atlas and it's offered in blueprint form for a couple of reasons one is because it'll be much easier to weld it up when it's already in place you could prob possibly, I can't offer any guarantees because I haven't tested it for myself yet, but quite possibly you could do a lot of the welding uh, directly from the Atlas inventories with the welders that are in there in the gantry to get this upper tab left, this upper tab done, and then you would just have this lower area to weld up, and it's mostly steel plates. I mean, there's, there's tubes and there's some conveyor blocks and there's some connectors, but mostly it's just steel plates welding up the blocks that kind of comprise the track itself. The things like this landing gear on the front and the two blocks sticking out from the ship connected to the landing gear, those can be welded off uh, as can the um, blocks over at the far end that aren't completely welded. They're just a frame and that's basically just to support the thing on the ground while I was building it. You can either not weld them or if you're if you accidentally weld them or you don't care that you welded them or if you're co copying and pasting the blueprint, you can easily grind them off. It's not a big deal. Now over here is the actual working model that this projection was created from. And the one thing that we have to add in here that we didn't, that I completely forgot about, but it'll be a quick and easy fix before we move on, are the arms that stick up off of this guy to show the um, drill ship that, hey, this is where you turn around. And the nice thing about the arms is that you can move them forward or back. If you want it to use the full length of the track ship, you can do that. You can just leave the arms where they are when it's all welded up from the projection. If you want a smaller area, you can decide exactly what area the drill ship will travel in just by moving the arms so that you have one limiting where the front is and one more limiting where the back is. You can customize it pretty easily that way with literally like four or five armor blocks. Really, really cheap and easy. So that's kind of a thing. Now, what does this leave us with before uh, we're finally done and putting this thing into service, mining things for us? Because that's kind of the, the thing that we're looking forward to is actually being able to mine with this whole setup. And the short answer is as soon as we've tested and confirmed that all of this is going to behave properly with a full-size track ship and the drill ship, then we'll be good to go. All we'll have to do is mine a ton of ice. I think I know where we can find some. <laughs> and we will be able to fill up our hydrogen tanks We'll have to do uh, a little bit of work to finish off these kind of uh, outrigger things on the side of the atlas just to kind of clean them up a little bit. But realistically speaking, once we've got the hydrogen, we're ready to go. We've got everything that we need to make our trip to Mars. And uh, once we get there, like I say, we're going to take a look around and then we're going to build a space station outside the atmosphere of Mars. It's going to be our uh, true and final central operating facility that we'll be using for all of our excursions onto Mars and also it's where we're going to be building our next ship from that's going to take us to the alien planet. 
So clearly, we've, we've still got plenty of things to do, and the game's still in early access. We haven't touched any kind of modding. There's, there's all kinds of stuff that we'll be taking a look at if you want to be notified when I add future videos. The easiest way to do that is to subscribe to my channel or follow me on social media. You can follow me on Twitter, links for that in the information box below the video. Feel free to leave your comments and feedback. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.